Greetings, brave travelers, and welcome to the God of Lulz Gaming Elemental Shaman Bis List and Gear Priority List in Tier 5. I made a first pass video of this a couple weeks back. I posted it to YouTube. It got quite a few views and also some comments. So in those comments, there was a lot of discussion over my choice of helm and shoulders primarily. I chose to go with the Cataclysm headpiece and the Cataclysm shoulder pads. I don't necessarily stand by my decision. I tend to agree with the commenters. I'll explain further why I see where I was mistaken. However, this time I went through every single piece, every single item, gem slot, all of the things to make sure that I'm giving you the best, most optimal BIS list available. So that being said, this is not our BIS. A uh, Cataclysm headpiece, Cataclysm shoulder guards, though very strong individual items, their set bonus is effectively useless. This is where the actual BIS list takes precedence. I'll explain the differences between the two sets and why I'm going to end up choosing to go this route. And hopefully by the end of it, you will have learned something uh, as I was able to humble myself and learn something. It was an absolute pleasure uh, getting to talk to the community. And I hope that those folks that disagreed with me are willing to uh, see this for what it is. So what I did essentially with the last tier set, uh, I originally had placed the Cataclysm chest piece in here to get the four piece set, which the four piece set gives you mana refund and lightning bolt. So it does give you longevity. It's actually pretty good in that regard. Um, I would say if you're not critting enough, especially when you do crit, getting mana back on top of having reduced mana cost on your spells is actually very, very potent. If you don't get to play with a Shadow Priest, this will allow you to use less mana potions and maybe more destruction potions in a fight um, if you want to get those bigger numbers. Regardless, uh, we're going with the Helm first, so we'll talk about that. Uh, the Cyclone Face Guard is first up. This is currently your BIS, and this will be your BIS in Phase 2. So Cyclone Face Guard pretty standard. Most of you probably have this by now if you've been playing in phase one. If you don't, I highly suggest that you get into a car group that's willing to do this. Uh, make sure that you're getting the Cyclone Face Guard. The meta gem that I chose uh, that I feel makes the most sense is the Chaotic Skyfire Diamond. This one has the plus 12 spell critical and 3% increased critical spell damage. The Swift Starfire Diamond on 70 upgrades is listed as your highest damage, but that's only because it's spell damage. Spell damage is technically more valuable for us, but the 3% crit, given that we crit constantly, is going to end up being stronger at the end. We're going with the Potent Noble Topaz. The reason this is, is because this is a yellow gem slot, and with this helm, you get the plus 5 spell damage socket bonus. So it's important that you line this one up because it's going to even out the spell damage that you'd lose from taking a nine spell damage gem. In fact, you get one more additional spell damage by going with this gem and you get an additional four spell, spell crit. Uh, the Sun King's Talisman, this is pretty self-explanatory. This is obviously best. They're, the only thing close to it is the Torment of Souls and it's not even close. The biggest reason why is because, well, it has one more crit on it and it also has 13 more spell damage. Uh, two less intellect, so you kind of balance out the crit a little bit, but the, the spell damage is really where it's at. We're going Cyclone Shoulder Guards. Now, the reason why we're sticking with the Cyclone set is what was discussed in the comments in the last video, the first pass video. This will be listed as the Absolute Bis video. So, Cyclone Shoulder Guards, strong in and of themselves, uh, I, again, went with the Orange Potent Noble Topaz gem. Uh, optimally, you could take the Potent Fire Opal uh, if you happen to get one from Akonai Crypt's Heroic. Obviously stronger, but also who runs this dungeon? Nobody. <laughs> uh, so we're going with the Potent Noble Topaz times two, and the reason that is is for the Socket Bonus, which gives us four additional spell damage. So if you do the math on that, we'd lose a, a two or four spell damage. Sorry, so we lose four spell damage in order to gain eight crit. So that's kind of a balancing act that we're playing. Some could argue that the four spell damage 
might be stronger, uh, but it's four spell damage versus getting additional crit. Crit is very important for Elemental Shaman, if you didn't know that. It continues to scale us rapidly, especially going into once we head into phase three and we start getting more haste. That's going to have a way bigger impact on our DPS to have all that crit. It'll also allow for more longevity because you'll get more clear casting procs. Root Cloak of the Ogre Magi maintains its spot as your strongest cloak, other than Doom Lord Kazak's cloak, Ancient Spell Cloak of the Highborn. The odds of getting this cloak are very slim from Doom Lord Kazak. Getting to kill Doom Lord Kazak in the first place is difficult. So I avoid putting this on Bist's list because I feel like it's it's something you can go for uh, if you have the time to do it and the groups to do it and such. I would highly recommend that you do go for it. However, most people are not going to see this item. So uh, it's important also that you get the 2% reduced threat to cloak enchant. Subtlety is huge for us. Uh, if you don't know, crits have a multiplier, a higher multiplier on threat. So when you're critting constantly, your threat is spiking rapidly. And this is one more way to combat it along with salvation or a tranquil air totem or, or whatever your group may have available to you. Vestments of the Sea Witch. It's obviously absolute bis, 110 top rate on 70 upgrades. Uh, Vestments of the Sea Witch has three gem slots. Conveniently, it has a blue gem slot, which we can also then get a socket bonus of five spell damage. So again, I went with the potent noble topaz gems. I then got a glowing knight's eye, which is five spell damage, six stamina. Again, the one from Cars on Nightbane is better. And the one from the Black Morass Heroic is better. So if you happen to get those, use those instead. The Exceptional Stats Enchant, that's a self-explanatory. There's nothing better than it. It's not hugely impactful for your DPS. However, if you're going to get a Chest Enchant, it better be worth it. Uh, so we got this blue gem here. Again, remember our meta gem. It is the Chaotic Skyfire Diamond. That's important to remember. So, the Mindstorm wristbands. We have those being our top priority. Very clearly, they are top damage. The Windhawk Bracers are not far off. Um, I, however, have the Nether Strike set. So, the Nether Strike set will carry me for a little bit until I get basically any one of these items, um, which I'll get to that in a second. Uh, you want two of these items in order to replace the damage that you're losing from the Nether Strike set. End game, this will be your absolute bis. So again, Nether Strike gives you 37 spell damage on the chest. If you can replace that directly with Vestments of the Sea Witch, you're already gaining that 20 spell power. So you'd lose the set bonus at 23. So technically, it would be a loss in that regard. However, being as they're so close, this would be the only one item upgrade I would say you could possibly replace the set with. Again, you lose spell power though, so keep that in mind. Uh, but you are gaining spell hit, which will allow you, if you're not a Draenei, for example, like myself, who's an orc, I struggle with having to gem a little bit for my spell hit. I would be able to eliminate those, those hit gems in order to gain the hit from this chest. So theoretically for me, it would be a total wash. I could put in a red gem or a yellow gem to get a socket bonus or anything like that. Okay, so the weapon. The weapon is the Nexus Key. This is the highest spell damage crit intellect combo you can possibly have. However, there is a close option and the close option is Nathrazine Mind Blade combined with the Fathom Stone. So you'll note, watch my spell power here, 115 or Sorry, 1015, spell crit is 34.13, no, watch closely, 1012, 34.63. So do you see that slight difference there? That slight difference, basically, we lose crit to gain two, sorry, we lose crit to gain three spell power. So we lose half a percent crit to gain three spell power. You could argue both ways. Uh, I would say the Nexus key is going to be stronger in general. Uh, the offhand is going to be a little bit more competitive because mages and warlocks bis is the sword. 
and that sword combined with Fathom Stone is their abyss. Depending, of course. Uh, if they have the offhand, the shadow spell damage, or the fire spell damage offhand, that would technically be stronger for them, so they might not go for the Fathom Stone. However, the Nexus Key is going to be all around stronger as it has more intellect on it, thus giving you even giving you that extra bumped crit. So onto the gloves, we got Soul Eater's hand wraps. So here's where I would recommend I would recommend double red gem here, or you could make up the blue gem. So yes, the socket bonus is for spell damage, however, you technically don't even it out. So you could you could do this. You could get the blue gem here. You could get that for the four spell damage. You're losing spell damage this way, and you're gaining a slight bit more crit. If your set is needing more crit, because we're trying to push as high a crit as possible while also maintaining very high spell power, uh, which you know is important, because if we're not critting, our DPS plummets dramatically, and also our mana efficiency drops dramatically. So... Yes, spell power is our highest stat priority. Wherever we can get spell power, it's the most important stat. However, losing too much crit will also screw our DPS over very harshly. So, we chose to go with the Ruined Living Ruby. I again say that you could probably swap this around. However, you see fit for your set. I'm choosing to go Ruined Living Ruby in that item. Uh, so... Your best here, uh, and this is where the Nether Vortexes come into play. Uh, hopefully your guild has a plan for Nether Vortexes, talks it out, works it out, does all the things properly, and you land in somewhere in the top spot because this belt is strong. The spell damage that you get from this item on top of the ridiculous amount of crit is actually crazy. So this is where I chose to get my second blue gem for my Chaotic Skyfire Diamond. I chose that because again, it's kind of a wash here. So this, this, you could do it either way. I would say if you do do this one as the blue gem, I would say go double spell damage here because otherwise you're going to be losing too much spell damage. So we go and we get our glowing night eye, we get our potent noble topaz, and we get our plus four spell damage, and our chaotic sky fire diamond is active. The cataclysm leggings. So this one. Clear Biss, unless you went Spell Strike, even then you'd be screwing over the Cyclone set. You can't really go Spell Strike for, for this scenario. Cataclysm Leggings is weaker only to the Leggings of the Seventh Circle, falls under the Doom Lord Kazakh rule. If you happen to get lucky and farm this guy and so on and so forth and land that item, that is obviously your Biss. Don't think otherwise. Definitely grab it. It's stronger. But Again, very few people will see this item in the game. So, highly recommend just going with the Cataclysm Leggings, as also they are dropping two tier tokens per boss, so the odds of you getting this item quicker, very good, so keep that in mind. We went with the Potent Noble Topaz on this item as well, which gives us plus two spell damage. So, five spell damage plus two is seven, so you're losing two spell damage to gain four crit. Generally speaking, again, spell damage is your higher priority, but it's also very important to maintain high crit percent. Anyways, we got Runic Spell Thread uh, as our leg enchant, the obvious one. No fast. Velvet Boots of the Guardian is our boots. That's from Lurker Below. It has a ridiculous amount of spell damage. That is why this item's best. Normally, items of spirit are weird to us because you don't need it. But this item has almost 50 spell damage in it, and our next, the one that I have, is the Boots of Foretelling. Our next bis outside of Leatherworking is the Boots of Foretelling, and if you look at the spell damage variant, it's huge. Even with the sockets, you're not making up that damage and crit. So, Velvet Boots of the Guardian is huge. Ring of Endless Coils, that is going to be your absolute bis. Along with the Ring of Unrelenting Storms, you're looking at this being your absolute bis item, this being your second bis item, two ring slots, no brainer, there's no questions asked. You could get close here with this Nature Spells Dream Crystal Band, but this is 
just stronger. Um, if you're in a situation where you're probably low on prio for an item uh, and you're not getting like ring of recurrence or something, honestly, go get this item. There's nothing wrong with it. It's very, very potent. Keep that in mind. Uh, we don't have ring enchants because we're not enchanters. If you're an enchanter, then go for it. <laughs> I am a skinning leather worker on my shaman uh, because I wanted to get the nether strike set and it made it a lot easier for me. Moving on. Trinkets. Icon of the Silver Crescent. Just this. It's just very strong. It's a strong trinket. There's no trinket like it. I have mags is still rated very high on here. However, the odds of you full resisting are very low in a fight. And if you do do it, it might be once and it might or it might be twice. So if you're lucky, you'll get one trinket proc, which granted is 170 spell power. But you'd have to get very lucky slash unlucky simultaneously in order to get that proc. 170 spell damage is huge. It's stronger than the Icon of the Silver Crescent, but you're not going to proc this every fight. So you could just be using this as a spell damage stick, which is, I, I guess, acceptable, but you'd be losing out on the DPS from our Lightning Capacitor Trinket. Or uh, what I kind of dance between is Quag Moran's Eye, or I dance between... Shafar's Nexus Horn. Always, though, I maintain the icon of the Silver Crescent. So where I usually go Shafar's Nexus Horn is dungeons, uh, because you're critting a, a lot in a dungeon with Chain Lightning. Chain Lightning increases your proc opportunities for this dramatically. So when you proc this item, you're gaining all that spell power, 225 off of spell crits. You're getting more damage out of it in Mythic Plus. In single target raid scenarios, however, Quagmoron's Eye or the Lightning Capacitor are very close to one another. Generally speaking, the Lightning Capacitor pulls ahead. So that's it for our BIS list. This is our Tier 5 Phase 2 Absolute BIS list. In comparison, I wanted to compare the two and why my initial reaction was to go with the tier five set so you'll pay close attention to these stats so you have nature damage uh, 1012 nature damage 1035 note immediately that this is higher this is 23 spell damage higher however with the two set from tier four you gain 20 spell damage on your wrath of air totem so really, this would read in a fight scenario, 1,032. The so 1,032 compared to 1,035, so you're losing still three spell damage. This was why my initial instinct was to go with that item. It's not far off, correct, but you're still giving 20 spell damage to your entire party on top of that. So you're increasing the raids DPS, you're increasing, or you're basically evening out your DPS to increase, increase the raids DPS. Spell crit, which is the next most important stat, 34.63 versus 34.55. So really, you're losing crit here, slightly, to gain three spell power. That's what you're looking at at the end of the day. While also with this set, you're giving an additional 20 spell damage still to your entire party, which is arguably way more valuable Um I wouldn't say way more valuable. It is moderately more valuable. 20 spell damage isn't like end all be all of a fight. It's not something that's going to guarantee you a boss kill. If you're that close to killing or not killing a boss, there are plenty of other things wrong with your raid over you wanting a tier five set. Uh, I would say there's nothing wrong with going with this. For example, if you're not having any luck in Karazhan or... You know, maybe your guild quits doing these and you don't want to pug or you don't have time to pug and you're kind of a casual classic player, things like that. I wouldn't necessarily worry about not getting the Cyclone face guards. It would, again, lose some DPS for your raid group. However, these are basically the same for you. So for yourself, you're, it's interchangeable. That being said, this is the BIS list. Okay. Onward to our priorities. So this is my thought process behind priority. 
I look at what is going to give me the most immediate increase, the strongest increase immediately in my DPS and or raid utility. Generally speaking, though, I'm looking for DPS. I want the big parses. I just got a 95 parse on mags a couple of days ago. I'm feeling pretty hyped about it. I'm happy. I still have a couple more pieces from phase one. Not really. Uh, just the totem from Mechanar and the Adornment of Souls. And then I'll be wearing full phase one bis. However, in this scenario, I prioritize what's going to give me the highest upgrade. Currently, I am not using the Adornment of Souls, which is still on my priority list. So what's going to give me the most immediate upgrade that gives me the most spell damage, most crit, would be the Sun King's Talisman. So I prioritize that as my number one item. This may be different for you. If you have Adornment of Souls, you might want to look to put this down just a little bit lower. Not much lower, because a lot of people are going to be competing for this item, but a little bit lower. So, Leggings of the Vanquished Champion, I put as my next highest. Again, you can look and see that the Leggings... Cataclysm leggings from the Stormsong kilt, which is what I'm currently using. It's a relatively substantial upgrade to go to those leggings. I wouldn't say it's too high in spell damage and crit increase. However, a lot of these items aren't. So the Nexus key is going to be an upgrade from what I'm currently using, which is Nathrazine Mind Mindblade mixed with Mazthril Honor Shield, which is the bad shield. Okay, so this one is going to be a decent upgrade for me, but not that big. It's like 20 spell power uh, and a little bit of crit at the end of the day, right? So I'm not too worried about it. All of these items give me a similar value and upgrade. So I chose to go for the items, put towards the top of my list the items that I think I could obtain the the... I, I might be a little lower on my priority. So like, for example, I'm competing with mages and you basically everybody for the necklace, right? So the higher I put this on my list, the more likely I am to be put towards the top of the, of the list because it's my first priority. I'm not looking to, in this scenario, be putting it down here and then loot council thinking that it's not that valuable for me when it's the highest upgrade I could get right away going into the next phase. Leggings of the Vanquished Champions falls under all of this category where it's like not that huge, but this is the order that I chose to go for them in. I don't really have any competition for the Nexus key because again, mages and warlocks are going to be looking for the sword. So your only real competition would be potentially Shadow Priest Boomkin. Likely only Boomkin, I think, because Shadow Priests actually get more spell damage from the one-hander mind blade uh offhand combo and spell damage is way more their priority because that's what they need is massive amounts of shadow spell damage so we would be competing essentially with boomkins for this item for first up so i'm not too worried about putting it up high on my list here i put high on my list to make sure that i get this token as quickly as possible there's going to be again two tokens that drop from each boss this i put up high because i want to make sure that i get put on that list as quickly possible we do have a pretty big list before me though so i accept that i'll be about fifth for this item or fourth for this item there's a lot of tier five set bonuses that are four piece set bonuses that are very strong we don't have a strong set bonus so we do not get prioritized on this item it just is what it is the ring of endless coils however i would argue would be very valuable to put up high i personally think i'm going to change this priority to make it go a little higher this item is going to be highly contentious. It's going to be very competitive. It's very strong. It's the strongest ring for basically everybody. And we want to make sure that we're up, up high on that list. So this is going to be our priority. So the way my guild does things is we consider the priority of the item. We consider the attendance of the raider. We consider the performance of the raider. And we consider the effort of the raider. So when they're not putting an effort to get gear... We're not going to give them all the first bits on on good pieces. We're going to give them the lower tier because they didn't go, you know, level. Like, for example, I leveled leatherworking to make my nether strike set. They didn't level blacksmithing to make their two-hander or whatever it may be. We're not going to prioritize them because they're not prioritizing themselves and our success. So, 
those are the main four factors that go into us deciding as loot council what we do. By the way, I didn't say this yet. I, I think I said it before in another video, but I'm an officer in the classic guild and I'm a GM of a retail guild. So I I, I consider all of these aspects when I when I give my opinion on pieces in loot council, so on and so forth. So uh, Ring of Endless Coils, I want to be relatively high up here. Uh, could I argue that it would go here or here? It's fine. I, I honestly, I'll put it as second item. It it is one of the stronger upgrades for me currently. I am using the Violet Signet of the Archmage. So as you can see, it's it's a pretty decent jump from from here to here. You're gaining eight spell damage from here to here, and you're gaining five crit. So this item is very clearly stronger than the Violet Signet of the Archmage. Why have I not gotten the Ring of Recurrence? It doesn't drop very often. Not very lucky. Didn't prioritize it very high because it's not that big of a jump from here to here. However, this item now takes massive priority. So we went Ring of Endless Coil second, Sun King's Talisman first. This, again, is interchangeable because if you have the Adornment of Souls, this item is not as big of an upgrade for you as it is for me. So I'm choosing to put this first. However, these are my priorities. These are this is all the loot that I've received. Yay, a lot of off beast stuff. Uh, I have gotten I got my abyss relatively early on. Um, there are a lot of interchangeable parts in our guild and so on and so forth. So I ended up pretty high in bio uh, for a lot of items. Um, and also there was zero competition for the unrelenting storms because we had no elemental shamans in the guild and we had no uh, bo boomkins and not even that boomkins really use it. It's just we had nobody to compete for this item. So I literally got it right away. As soon as it dropped off trash, I got it. Uh, Soul Eater's Hand Wraps I was first prior on. That was actually huge. Brute Cloak of the Ogre Magi. Most Warlocks Mages use the Hit Cloak. So this became my item right away. Uh, so I got defaulted a lot as an Elemental Shaman, which was nice. Uh, it happens a lot as an Elemental Shaman or a Shadow Priest that you'll get defaulted items um, on your prio, essentially, because the competition is not very high. Anyways, uh, I've rambled on for quite a while now. I'm going to segment and uh, make this video easy to navigate for all of you. I do appreciate you taking your time to hear me out on the last video that I made and then this one. Uh, I am excited to create more Elemental Shaman content. I stream over at twitch.tv slash god of lulz. We raid Wednesday and Thursday nights, 8 p.m. Eastern to 11 p.m. Eastern. So if you want to tune into my streams then, I'll be streaming classic content, except currently I generally stream classic content on Wednesday night only because we do one night rating because the content's very easily sped through. Uh, however, when phase two comes out, we will be doing both raid days. So tune in Wednesday and Thursday, 8 to 11 p.m. EST at twitch.tv slash god of lulz. Besides that, if you wouldn't mind hitting that subscribe button, it would be massively helpful. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. This is your T5 phase two bisless or elemental shaman. Thank you so much and farewell.